Hey, heathens. All right, so chapter 8 with Genesis. Now, remember, we wrapped up the last chapter and 150 days uh, worth of water. All right, now it says it's supposed to rain for 40 days and 40 nights, but here's all this other water coming in from other places. Chapter 8, uh, God uh, remembered Noah and every living thing. In the <laughs> God remembered Noah. Oh, yeah, the water. <laughs> like he left the water on in the tub. Uh, and every living thing in the cattle that was with him in the ark, and God made a wind pass over the earth, and the waters uh, assuaged. The fountains also of the deep, and the windows of the heavens, uh, the windows of, the, of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. Okay, so um, when it stops raining, there's windows in heaven that are closed. So like, you know, where is it? Your house, whenever it rains, you close the windows because it's raining. There, they close the windows when it stops raining. Anyway, silly, silly, primitive people. Um, and the waters returned from off the earth uh, continually. And after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated. All right, so we got rain for 40 days, 40 nights. We got all this other water coming from somewhere else, pouring out of a window from heaven, I guess. All right, was it 40 days or was it 150 days? I'm, I'm not exactly sure. But for 150 days, which is five months now, and the ark rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of um, Ararat. All right, so all right, and the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. All right, so it came to a rest. Now this ark, all this water is receding away. All right, so in the seventh month. It comes to rest on a point, but you can't see the mountain yet. It takes three more months before you can actually see the mountain. All right, ten months gone by. Came to pass at the end of the forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made. He sent forth a raven, uh, went forth and fro, and the waters dried up from the earth. Um, also, he sent forth a dove to uh, see if waters were abated from off the face of the ground. Um, uh, but the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned to him on the ark, and the waters were the face of the whole earth. Um, then he put forth his hand, took her, and pulled her uh, unto him into the ark. All right, so this one single window that these people are breathing out. So if you thought there was more than one window, no, nope, it's still just the one window. All right, so. Uh, Here's the crazy part. All right. On um, verse 10, he stayed yet another seven days, and again he sent forth the, door, the dove from the ark. The dove came to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf, leaf plucked off, so no one knew the waters were abated from the earth. All right. For 10 months, and a week apparently, for 10 months. Oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Came to us in the 40 days. So, all right, so it's 10 months, 40 days, which is another month, uh, and then another week. So we're almost a full year now. Everything's been underwater, but there is a leaf that this bird has been able to find. One week after it couldn't find anything. Do you understand how illogical that is? Everything has been soaked under salt water. It would have died. This bird can find an olive leaf. It didn't say branch. So we're not talking about the remains of a stick off of a tree that was floating somewhere. No, it says leaf. So no one knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. Um, uh, no. It couldn't happen. Sorry. All right, so he waited another seven days and sent forth a dove, which uh, uh, returned not again unto him no more. And so it came to pass um, uh, in the uh, 601st year, in the first month, first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. All right. So, all, all right, it took 10 months 
Well, five months it, uh, we had all this water. Forty days it rained, but we had an, an additional four months of extra water. Um, five months after that, you can see the mountains. Two months later, all the water's gone. Where did the water go? All this water that covered every mountaintop for 20 uh, cubits, or, or what is it, 15, 15 cubits, 1.5, uh, 22.5 feet over the tallest mountain. Um, Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked up, or looked and behold, in the face of the, face of the ground was dry. Not only was the water gone, it was dry. Now, if you've ever been to like a swamp where there's water not too far below the, uh, the, uh, the ground there, you'll know that there may, you may not see water, but the ground ain't dry. In the second month on the seventh and twenty, seven and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dry. So, miraculously, all this stuff is happening. I guess God's doing it. God spake to Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons, and the sons' wives of thee, and bring forth thee every living thing that is um, with thee, all the flesh, both fowl, and of the cattle, and of the creeping thing that creepeth of the earth, and they breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful, and multiply on the earth. And Noah went forth with his sons and his wives, and, they, and his sons' wives, and they all got it on. Every beast and creeping thing that creepeth, every fowl whatsoever creepeth on the earth, and their kinds went forth out. All right, so... Um, what are the, the the olive leaf existed, so I guess there's plenty of grass for them to eat too, even though it's been um, buried under 22 and a half feet of salt water uh, for the last year. But these things are all going to go eat something and survive, and not only survive but have babies and continue on their bloodline. All of these single pairs are going to incestually mate to reproduce and get all their the creatures now all the kangaroos got to get to australia all the penguins have to get to you know the uh, the poles um everything that you know only breeds in uh you know certain countries is all they've all got to get their their respective places all the polar bears got to get back to their spots all the all the things that can only live in cold climate that are now in the freaking desert um and all the uh uh, all the things that you know can only live in warm spaces. All, all these things that have to be in their uh, tropical climates and everything else. They've all got to get back to wherever it is that they're going, and do this with whatever food's supposed to be remaining. All right. Um, Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took took every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. All right. So. Whatever was left over of the clean animals, he's now going to kill um, on the altar. Then what is he going to eat? He, you understand what I'm saying? And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. So he's going to kill all these creatures whatever's left over that nothing else ate during the entire year they were on the ark there would be nothing left for him to eat all the clean beasts would be extinct Lord smelled the sweet savor and the Lord said in his heart I will not again curse the ground for it uh, any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth neither, uh, neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done while the earth remains seed time harvest cold and heat summer winter and the day of the night it should not cease all right so God decides that uh, all right killing everything is probably a bad idea I'm not going to do that no more um, it's a good thing because everybody's about to die because they got nothing to eat oh. but what's up with the animal sacrifice God smelled the sweet savor Sick, man. God's twisted, man. Seriously, seriously messed up. Alright. So that's chapter 8. 
Chapter 9 is when it gets saucy. 